we are in Santa Cruz, California with what passes as a budget rental car in America. The Chevy Camaro SS. You know, back in the 60s, the Camaro was the epitome of Detroit muscle. But then it had a long, bad stretch living under the bridge and pooping itself. The 70s, 80s, and 90s were not kind to the Camaro. Which kind of reminds me of the next company that we're going to visit, Bell. And it's not as if Bell was sitting under the bridge drinking a 40 with Camaro and having its bad years, but over the past decade, Bell's really been positioned as the affordable brand and its big sister, Giro, was getting all the nice design touches. But this year, Bell's coming out with two new helmets, the Full 9 and the Super, that suggest that Bell's returning to its former glory as a design powerhouse. This is the dome. It's the collection of artists, designers, and engineers who are responsible for actually making each of Bell's new helmets. So this is Bell's latest downhill helmet. It's called the Full 9. With this one, we want it to integrate a whole bunch of features that have not been done. Magnetic cheek pads, the camera mount that's breakaway. It has the eject bladder system. And then we also did speaker um, integration. So basically, uh, and so we, it wasn't an afterthought. We decided we wanted to integrate it and also protect the user. This is Bell's new super helmet. I think it fits in this uh, new style of riding called enduro riding. Um, went about this helmet in a different way. There was nothing out in the market to compare it to, so we had to kind of start from scratch. One of the things we wanted to do with this helmet was we just felt like a lot of those people um, need a little bit lower coverage than the typical cross-country helmet and also that they were riding with goggles. We have the overbrow venting and basically what this allows for is to have your airflow go through here and when you're in here you don't pack it out with um, padding like some other helmets have. Um, so it's pretty active ventilation. Also the channeling in here allows for a lot of cooling. Clearly Bell's cranking out interesting helmets but the real question here is how did they make that leap from making budget lids to high-tech helmets? As we walked around Bell, it became clear it's because there's someone passionate shaping the helmet at every stage of its development. And it actually all starts right here with this raw idea for something cool. Bell doesn't have sort of gratuitous styling. It's really about function. It's almost like we, we built the helmet to work the way we wanted, and then we styled it. And in this case, we were able to sort of overlay the Moto 9 onto all this functionality. Mm -hmm. Part of the fun is sort of figuring out what you're not. Um, you know, you know, are we this, are we this? And, um, and so you just have to have that in front of people and go, oh, you know, that's not what we are. Um, so you have to go through that exercise. To you know, gotta try it. Yeah, you, yeah. Can't, you can't really know who you are until you kind of know who you're not. You know, we walked in and we saw the row of Bell helmets, and it really doesn't matter what era they're in, you can still tell that each one, you can just look at the silhouette as a Bell helmet. So was that something that you try to insert in this model as well? Did it have to carry that forward? We didn't really draw anything from this exercise other than we knew we didn't want to go here. Um, that was the main thing. You know, you got motorcycles. I've seen prints of really sexy cars. Mm -hmm. does, the, does the auto world work its way into your design process? Does that inspire you at all? Absolutely. Uh, essentially, uh, helmets are dynamic forms that we put in our heads and automobiles are you know, the quintessential expression of dynamic forms. If you're taking inspiration from cars, yep. what car is that helmet? What car is that helmet? Um, it can be a fast pack, it can be, I, you know. He tried to load us. Yeah, I'm gonna be biased, but I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say it's more like, you know, Corvette Camaro Mustang-ish, you know? Something. I was gonna say Camaro. Yeah. <laughs> so once the general look of the helmet's been sketched, it's up to an entirely different artist to painstakingly sculpt that out of clay or foam. That model's then scanned, and it's up to another engineer to take that into CAD and devise the helmet's actual framework. This is the point in the process where the prototype helmets are taken into the test lab and they're given a massive beatdown. They're dropped from big heights, they're smashed on anvils. The whole point here is to try to replicate the kind of abuse a helmet's going to actually see out on the trail. It doesn't matter how safe or high-tech a helmet is, if it looks lame, you're not going to wear it. So it's off to the graphic guys to make the helmet look cool, which is actually harder than it sounds because everyone knows what sucks, but defining cool, that's tough. Austin and Danny and I are out in the world for an entire year, going around looking at different trends, figuring out what's going to vibe for the season. Is this color going to be the color for this? Is this what people are going to wear in their, um, 
in their clothing and all their components on their bikes. So we have a lot of homework that we have to do, but I mean, that's the fun part. We get some inspiration from like inner bike, but I think a lot of it comes from just being out there. Um, Danny and I get in the woods a lot, being out there where people are riding. Uh, we go to X Games. There's a line of kids graphics, not this year, that was done to Slayer, and old Slayer, you know? I was just like, oh, well, I'll listen to this in a while. And I'm just like, how am I gonna get through all these unicorns and ponies, you know? So it's like, yeah. It's like whatever. Gonna, like a rain of blood edition child helmet. <laughs> you know, I try, but you know, sometimes they're, they've been letting me get away with things as the years pass, you know? So, um, but yeah, it, it, it's, they have to be able to sell it. So I understand. Obviously a lot of work goes into making these helmets, but what's the point? What does all this activity even add up to in the grand scheme of things? Well, this is an awesome, it looks like an art piece, it's a helmet, it looks like it's for fun. I mean, it's, it's safety, it's, you know, I, I, I don't take my job lightly. I definitely like to think outside the box. Like, I'm proud of this thing, like everything about it, I'm stoked on.